Hello genealogists, this is Craig and this is Just Genealogy. And today we're going to talk about numbering because as a genealogist you have to understand at least some of the numbering systems. You do not have to understand all of them, but there's just a couple that you must understand. So we're going to go through that. Today we're only going to talk about basic systems. We're not going to talk about, well, what happens if the surname changes? What happens if someone is adopted? What happens... Um, with international things. Um, how do we treat internationally different? We're also um, not gonna talk about uh, step relationships to start off with. Well, actually we'll probably have a video on each one of those as time goes on. So all we really wanna talk today about is basic systems. So one of the problems that we're going to encounter when it comes to numbering your genealogy is that there are so many different ways to do it. And all and people will attempt to convince you that theirs is the way. And there are circumstances where theirs is the way, especially if they're the editor of the journal, which you are providing your genealogy to for publication. But truly, there are so many ways, but so few choices. Some systems are appropriate to working papers some systems are very difficult to use in anything other than the final publication. And those are the things that we're going to talk about. Those that are appropriate to working papers, those that are appropriate to final publication. My caveat is that regardless of what numbering system you use, if you are publishing for someone else, you must get a copy of their style sheet and determine what numbering system you should be using for their publication. They're not going to appreciate you one bit if they want you to do, for example, register format and you're providing them with the NGSQ format. And if you don't know what those things mean at this point in time, you will by the end of this video. So there are a couple of books out there that are going to help you deal with numbering and probably one of the most important ones out there is numbering your genealogy it's a publication of the national genealogical society it's rather inexpensive and it's in my top 10 list for books that you should have as a genealogist it will deal with basic systems and it will deal with the complex systems and international systems that we're not going to talk about today but I hope to talk about in the future so this is my number one so the second book out there is Dollar Hide Numbering for Genealogists by Brian Smith. Now, I haven't used this book very often, but it has some excellent discussion in regards to some of the working paper pieces of numbering. I would not personally use Dollar Hide Numbering in a final publication unless the editor required it and if i was my own editor i probably wouldn't use it either because there's a learning curve associated with using it for working papers i think it's great so there are two kinds of numbering system two types of numbering systems and by that i mean classifying them not in regards to the style being used there are numbering systems for working papers and there are numbering systems for the final publication so working papers numbering systems, some of them you may be familiar with, like Anantafel numbers. There are also Henry numbers and modified Henry numbers, which are really good for using databases and computer systems. And then there's the dollar hide numbering system, which is sort of an outgrowth of and a modification of all these other working paper systems together into a single system. 
So on and TOEFL numbers are pretty simple. They're based on pedigree charts. And don't forget, if you don't have a pedigree chart, you can download a pedigree chart from the National Genealogical Society website to get you started. And those are free. But these are one, two, three, four, five, six. In other words, you're number one, your father's number two. All the males are even numbers. All the females are odd numbers. Two to the zero is one. Two to the first is two. Two to the second is four. Two to the third is eight. Two to the fourth is 16. And that's your Y DNA stream or the names of the paternal, the direct paternal line. And then you can do the same thing uh, on the female line uh, because it is all exponential. It is all a function of twos. Now, Henry numbers are a little bit different. Henry numbers, the first generation is one. The second generation person is one one if it's the first child of the first generation person. The third generation would be one 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 if it's the first child of the first child of the first child kind of thing or the focus person. In the an example of one one two would tell me that the focus person's first child's second child was, and in the fourth generation it might be the focus person's first child who's second child of that person and then the first child of that second child of that first person of the focus person. Now, one of the problems with Henry numbers is they can go on for a long, long time. And this is this number one, one, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five, six, seven is actually the 14th generation. So if you count the numbers in a Henry number, you have the generation. See how the single letter number one is first generation and then one one that's not 11 that's one one those are two digits so that's the second generation third generation is three digits fourth generation is four digits now there's some problems associated with the henry numbering system especially when you get beyond nine children and then you have to do this you have to put numbers in brackets now we pretty much don't do that anymore this is how we did it before computers what happened when we started to get computers is we got something called the modified Henry system. Dollar Hyde calls it modern Henry. I, old school, I call it modified. And this will allow us to account for 35 children. Nine digits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 26 letters. So it would, could read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, the only problem with this is that what happens if you've got a single man, a single father, I should say, who has 36 children? The whole purpose of the modified Henry numbers is to allow you to sort things in accordance with the ASCII table. When was the last time you heard the words ASCII table? It must have been at least 15 years ago. So I will tell you that number 36 is a left bracket and number 37 is a right bracket. And that's the most number of children that I have ever encountered from a single parent. He was married three times. So three different wives, one, one father, 37 children, and you could use modified Henry numbers to be able to account for those. Now, if there were 38 or 39 or 40 children, I would just go to the ASCII table and figure out what the codes were. Remember that I'm recommending that you only use these for working papers. In other words, in databases where you're doing a lot of sorting. Now, with the modified Henry's, you can sort by generation. You can sort by descendancy. All kinds of ways that you can play with it within a database. So that's why Henry is useful. But Henry is not something that you want to publish with. I really don't know much about the dollar hide number system, except that it is Anantoffel and Henry combined together. I would look to the Brian Smith publication for its use. I'm too old school for it myself, and meaning I've already learned what I want to learn about numbering and I don't need a new numbering system. But if you're young and you have patience, 
and you don't mind the learning curve, the dollar hide numbering system looks to be very useful for working papers. I would not recommend it for publication, just as I would not recommend Anantafel's or Henry's modified or otherwise for publication. So what are the final publication systems that I would recommend? Well, first of all, you're going to use whatever the editor of the periodical that you're dealing with is going to request as part of their style sheet. So please remember to get the style sheet. However, there really are only two numbering systems, register and NGSQ. Now, registers is the system of the New England Historic Genealogical Society, and it's been used in the New England Historic Genealogical Society register. I just call it the register since 1847. And in fact, we at Heritage Books have published the register up through 1919, I think it is, with the permission, actually, of the New England Historic Genealogical Society 20 years ago when Heritage Books first started publishing it. So that's kind of cool that those are in print. You can also, I think, through membership in the NEHGS, which is, in my mind, an easier way to describe it, NEHGS. Some people just call it New England, but you have to know what you're talking about when you, who you're talking to when you actually say New England. So I just use NEHGS. And there, if you have a membership to that society, I believe that you can get access to all of the back publications all the way back to 1847. I'm not sure of that. I haven't tried uh, in quite some time. They used to have a CD years ago, but that caused problems for them and copyright and those kind of things. So I don't really know where that stands, but my assumption is that it is out there. So when you look at the register format, the register format only numbers people who are going forward. So here's my family with some modifications. In other words, I'm not going to give you the names of all my siblings. There are eight of them, so I've only used a few of them, and I've used initials to protect the guilty. I mean innocent. So my father, Charles, is of the fourth generation of Samuel John William Worley. Notice the numbers. Now, I, Samuel is not the immigrant, so far as I can tell, but I've treated him like he was the immigrant for the purposes of illustration. So your immigrant uh, would be uh, actually John, or it could be Samuel. It's based on where they're born, if I have that right in my head. And I usually don't worry about it. I usually don't bother with the letter A, B, C, D, or E. I usually just use numbers just to keep it straight in my head. But again, if I were to publish it in the register or I were to publish it in NGSQ, I would have to make the modification to meet the editorial style. So based, you can see here that Charles's father's name is Worley. And Worley's father's name is William, and William's father's name is John, and John's father's name is Samuel. And then there'll be some narrative, and then at the end of the narrative, there will be a, a statement of the children of Charles and whatever mother there is. My father's only been married once to Anne jo Jacqueline Roberts. And so I am the first of their children, so notice the five there next to my middle name. You don't put the five at the end of the, the end of the surname. You put the five between the uh, Christian and middle name and the surname. And that helps you to distinguish between things that are surnames and things that are unhyphenated surnames. In other words, my name could be Craig and my surname could be Robert Scott without a hyphen or with a hyphen. So the five, if my last name was actually Robert Scott, then the five would go next to the G and Craig. It would not go next to the Roberts. The two means that this, that the information for me is being forwarded and will, can be found elsewhere in the publication. So if you then were to go to two, you would find uh, me with a five and then Charles with a four and then my children would then have three and four if they were carried forward. And if we were to, so the next person in line would be my son and he would be a three. And the next person after that would be a four. Now my son has no children. 
Uh, so under this concept, you might only include birth and uh, he's not dead, but should he die, no time soon, I hope, um, you, it's possible for you to have that information there and not carry him forward. I personally like to carry a person forward until they don't have any children. So I would carry Justin forward one more generation if I had sufficient narrative about him that would not be a few sentences. In other words, if I had paragraphs about him, I would want to carry him forward. If I didn't, I would just put the various vitals there and, and, the, and short statements about what was going on with him. Now, my daughter has, a, uh, has gifted me a granddaughter, so she would be four. There, she would be carried forward, of course, because she had children. And then her daughter would be five. So... Haley would be five in the scheme of things. But if, if either of these people was not carried forward, much like KT and CK above them, they would not have numbers. So that's the secret of the register format. The secret of the register format is you only number people that you are in fact going to carry forward. So let's talk about NGSQ. Now, that's the numbering system of the National Genealogical Society Quarterly, which has been in print since 1912. It's sometimes called the Modified Register System, but I don't personally agree with that, and I don't care what anybody says. It's the NGSQ system. Is it a modification of the register system? It most assuredly is, but after over 100 years, it could stand on its own two feet, and we could call it NGSQ and not insult the National Genealogical Society Quarterly people by trying to pretend that they are just an offshoot of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. It's a game that some people play. I don't play the game. So when you look at NGSQ, everybody is numbered. Everybody, whether they move forward or not. What determines whether somebody moves forward or not is the plus sign in front of the number. So here, everything is the same, except everybody is numbered, and there's a plus sign if people move forward. So you see the two has a plus sign in front of it, and then you see down farther, there's a two, and then that's me being carried forward. And if the documentation were to continue, number five and number six would carry forward also because they have plus signs. Now, I was very fortunate some time back to be the individual that transported the National Genealogical Society review copies to Milton Rubicam when he was the review editor for the National Genealogical Society quarterly. So every Wednesday night, I would run the NGS library on Glebe Road, back when it was on Glebe Road. And I would pick up the review books Wednesday night when I finished my stint there. And the next day, Thursday, I was stationed at Bethesda uh, Naval Hospital compound in those days. So I would drive down, if you're familiar with East West Highway 410. Well, Milton Ru Rubicam lived just off of 410. And if you're familiar with the area at that time, I was living in Brentwood uh, for a while. So I would drive right by his house. But for about 18 months to two years, every week I would go and visit Milton. And we would have uh, drinks and cake and cupcakes and those kind of thing because that's what his wife did for us. And we would sit and talk for maybe a half an hour to an hour sometimes about things in genealogy. And if you know anything about the history of genealogy, Milton Rubicam was the youngster of the group that turned genealogy around and made it a thing headed by Jacobus and then some other names. And I'll, I'll cover that at some point in the future uh, when I start talking about the history of genealogy. But anyway, one of our discussions was, well, which numbering system do you like the best? Recognize that Milton Rubicam was the editor of the NGSQ for a good number of years and recognize that he was also the review editor for the NGSQ. So he might have bias. 
and I was ready to accept that bias. But his explanation for me was better than the bias that he might have. He said, actually, it was quite simple. At the end of my genealogy, I know how many people are in it. Because after all, in the NGSQ system, everybody has a number. And that was enough for me. So that's my discussion of basics of numbering systems. I want you to repeat after me. There are only two acceptable numbering systems for publication. Just two. NGSQ and register. Or whatever your editor requires but they should be requiring NGSQ or register. And I want you to repeat that three times to yourself because I don't want you to forget that. I always want you to remember that there are really, don't make up a new numbering system. Don't start your introduction with, I've numbered it because this way because just recognize that in order to be accepted by the professional community of genealogists, and you really want that to happen, is that you must use the register or the NGSQ system at time of publication. You can use whatever you want in your working papers. In fact, I don't use NGSQ or register in my working papers. I use Modified Henry just because it's easier and it's on a computer screen and I can sort it 16 different ways and I can move people around very easily. The reason these two numbering systems are for final publication is they are a bear if you have to change something. Now, there are some software widgets out there that you can use to number that final publication when the time comes. I'm not familiar with those to the extent that I actually do all this by hand. But if I were to do a major publication, I would start learning how to use some of the numbering system programs that exist out there to apply to your Word document, your WordPerfect document, if you're still using WordPerfect, those kind of things. But personally, I do it by hand, and it really is a bear if all of a sudden you need to change something. And it never fails that once you've decided to put something into final publication, and you're doing that final format, you will all of a sudden learn something new because that relative you couldn't find all of a sudden shows up and you've got to fit them and their descendants in there somewhere. So this is Craig. This is Just Genealogy. And today we've been talking about numbering. I want to thank you all very much for all your support. I appreciate all those people who have subscribed and all those people that spend time viewing what I have to say. It's very satisfying the things that you say about what we're doing. Just know that I appreciate all of you.